Hey guys, so I just finally got done watching VHS 99. Um, happy Halloween, everybody. Um, I finally have watched all these fucking horror movies for the month of October that I promised. Ah, oh, thank God. Um, as I said, as I said, as I said, um, uh, my last review, I have overdone it. <laughs> I overdid it this year. I might have to cut it back a little bit next year. Unless some things change, but, like, my life has been fucking busy this month. And then on top of that, I decided to do, like, 14 fucking movie reviews, horror movie reviews on top of that in a 31-month day month. Uh, and, yeah, I overdid it. Uh, including, like, nine of them I had to watch on fucking, uh, on either on demand or streaming service or whatever. I had to take my time out of my fucking day, try to find time to do it. So, yeah, I hope you're all fucking happy. <laughs> um, I enjoyed it. I've enjoyed them. Um, I've sat for, fortunately, shit like Deeper Creepers and uh, Monsters, but I have sat for some interesting, fun ones like Prey, Hellraiser, uh, VHS 94. And so, I, of course, you know, I, I, don't know, I was trying, Hocus Pocus was fun. Uh, I, you know, it's always kind of. I always want to try to end on a bang, you know, like one big horror movie review for the for Halloween. And I figured, what the fuck? Why not review the new VHS movie? Since I've reviewed all the others, like I've said in my VHS ninety four review, um, I didn't even know this was a last minute movie I decided to review because I didn't even know this was coming out this year. I knew that they were working on it. I didn't know it was coming out this year. And these movies, they turned these movies out really fucking quickly. Um, apparently there's a third, another one called VHS 85 coming out next year already, so fuck it. Um, I guess I'll be reviewing that next year, but, um, yeah. I was like, I've enjoyed these movies up to this point. It's like, I gotta obviously watch VHS 99. Obviously I hated stuff, the only one I did hate was Viral, but, you know, 94 got it back on track a little bit. So I'm like, yeah, I wanna see VHS 99. I'm sure it'll be fun. Uh... Hasn't been getting as good reviews as, like, VHS 94, but, yeah, it's like, <laughs> I saw the trailer, and I, I like, having, being a kid that grew up in the 90s, and remembering, you know, being 11 around 99, or whatever, you know, like, the movie had me kind of, like, smiling, like, uh, the trailer had me smile and watching it, I was like, alright, this might be up my fucking alley, and you know what, this might be an unpopular opinion, but I like this better than VHS 94. I actually did. I know this is not getting as good reviews, but I thought this was a stronger movie than VHS 94. I really did enjoy the hell out of this movie. I don't know if I'm in the minority on it. It kind of sounds like I am, but you know what? Fuck it. My my channel, my opinion, fuck you if you don't like it. <laughs> of course I'm joking. Um... No, yeah, I really did enjoy this fucking movie. I really, really did enjoy this movie. I liked it. Honestly, it's the best since the second one. Honestly, I think it's the best one since the second one. Um, honestly, for the most part, almost every story was honestly a, ho a home run, I thought. It was really fucking good. Um, one thing I really, really loved about this movie more than anything else is that they did the one thing I was hoping they would do for for a long time now, and that is just get rid of a wrap around the wrap around segment. There is no wrap around segment in this movie. As I said in the VHS ninety four, those are always the weakest parts of the movie. Is the wrap around segments? This is said fuck it with this one and just said let's just not even have a wrap around segment, and there isn't one. It's basically. And because of that, it kind of almost feels a little bit more authentic because the tape, it's basically what you're watching is a kid's tape that he records over various different shit over time. And he, with his, he's recording like his own home videos and stuff like that. And also on top of that, there's some footage of the stuff that happened, the, the stories in this movie. But it's like just, it's made to feel like a actual VHS tape for the first time. Honestly, it does feel like an actual VHS tape in that, like, you know, you have tracking issues or, 
uh, people recording over stuff and stuff. I, I like to appreciate the hell out of it. I love that they just decided to fuck it and say, fuck it with the uh, wraparound segment. Just went, you know, did one without it. It's like, I'm fine with that. Continue doing that movie. I hope they do that with 85. So the first segment uh, was called uh, Shredding. And between this one and the second one, it had a recurring theme uh, in both those, both these stories in that they had some of the most unlikable characters that like you're following in this in both stories, this one and the second one, that you want these characters to die, and you get your fucking you get what you wish by the end of it. This one is about this group of punk rockers that uh, are like these uh, guys who do like or make these videos and they're like uh, want to be punk rockers and they tell this legend of the story of this uh, little concert venue near them that had a fire and killed the whole band, the band that performed there in a fire and they were the band was killed by their fans because they were trampled by their fans as their, their fans were trying to escape the fire and their fans escaped the fire but the band didn't so they decide to go to this uh, abandoned venue and try to uh kind of mess with the spirits and the one guy is real, deeper religious and says that he don't think this is a good idea and of course, you know where this is gonna fucking go. I'm pretty sure you know where it's gonna go, and it's pretty good. Like I said, these characters are awful fucking people, and you're like, dude, I want to see these fuckers die. <laughs> like, I hope these characters die the most painful death, and they do. Spoiler alert. Um, and it's satisfying. Only problem with this one was that I don't know if I'm the only fucking person that had this problem. I watched this like movie, the first half of this movie, like at like 12 in the afternoon and this segment was particularly really dark and a lot of the times it was really hard to see what the fuck was going on it kind of did annoy me a little bit maybe it was a little too dark um i guess it makes sense in this where the setting is at in the segment that it would be that dark but still kind of got a little bit of lighting in this fucking i don't know um other than that that's that was maybe my only problem. I thought it was a fun story. I had a satisfying, you know, conclusion that, again, I wanted to see these fuckers die. Uh, the second segment was called Suicide... Right, let me look at... Suicide Bid. That's it. It's called Suicide Bid. Let me get these names so I don't forget them. Suicide Bid, which is... It's a story that's been done before where it's a fraternity. This girl who just started college and wants to become a new member of his fraternity, very popular fraternity. And I don't know if this is a thing. I didn't, you know, I, I went to college, but I didn't try to offer a fraternity or anything like that. Uh, where, so it's a, so, yeah, it's a sorority she's trying to go into, sorry. Um, where you have to, like, put out bids for all these kinds of sororities, not just one, but she decides she just wants to bid on this one. They call it a suicide bid hence the title, and the people in the sorority, these girls in the sorority, find us out, and they're like, they decide to kind of uh, exploit this girl because of that, and then the way of their, they exploit her is that they take her to the cemetery, where they tell them this legend of a girl who wanted to become a part of her sorority just like her, who they did a, they did a thing, in order for her to become a member of the sorority, they had her uh, lie in a coffin and be buried alive for a whole night, and they and uh, yeah, and be buried alive for a whole night. And if if she survived that night, she would uh, basically she could become part of the sorority. Uh, but they also tell the legend that. When they went to find the previous girl, she was nowhere to be found. And they're, she, they think that she was pulled under by this supernatural being that was lonely in the underground. And she wanted to bring her to the underground. 
So they figure they make her get in this coffin uh, to prove that she wants to be in the seniority sorority, and they decide to you know bury her alive and probably know where it's fucking going. Uh, I'm sorry, do. And pretty quickly, easily, you figure to find out these people, are, these fucking sorority girls are fucking terrible people. And again, you want to see them die horrible deaths. Really horrible deaths by like halfway through it. They're really awful people. And this poor girl, especially in the scene where they tell her if she starts freaking out, they she should just open this box. They give her a box to take with her into the fucking coffin. And of course, the majority of the movie, the story is her, this girl lying in a coffin. And of course, you're fucking claustrophobic. You're going to be fucking having a panic attack. So... She starts pretty quickly having, like, getting freaked out by sitting in the, laying in this coffin. So she opens the box. The fuckers decide to put spiders in there. And the spiders all get unleashed on, into the coffin while she's lying there. Trying to, you know, save her breath for the next, you know, 24 hours or so. And they put spi- I was like, at that point, I'm like, alright, these bitches need to die. <laughs> Uh, I love the story. I love, if you're, again, if you're fucking freaked out by claustrophobia, oh yeah, you might not like this story. Uh, the next story is under, was Ozzy, uh, Ozzy's, uh, what the fuck was it? Ozzy's Dungeon, that's right. Ozzy's Dungeon. Um, no, it's not Ozzy Osbourne. I was like hoping like Ozzy Osbourne, Ozzy Osbourne's in the bad shape nowadays, so when he, I don't think he would have been able to do it. But this one had the most, like, I definitely, this one and the next one kind of both had me, like, okay, where are you going with this movie? <laughs> like, I was curious, like, it kept my curiosity. So, this movie, op the story opens with a fake game show, kids game show, like, um, Legends of the Hidden Temple, or, um, what's that? fucking show that I used to watch. Uh, the one with the slime and shit. The Nickelodeon show. Um, but it's the, one of those kinds of shows that you would see on Nickelodeon where these kids have to go through this obstacle course and if they go through it and it's really impossible obstacle course they get to have a wish of theirs granted uh, by someone named Ozzy. Uh, and they say it's really impossible, and this little black girl is, like, really confident, I'm gonna be the first one to do it. No one's done it, apparently. And so they finally, th this girl goes through this fucking maze and all this stuff like that, all these obstacle courses, and suffers, like, a horrific injury because of one of her, uh, one of the fellow, uh, contestants that are in the game with her causes her to have an injury, horrific injury, and she isn't able to complete the game. And they're like, oh, wow. I was like, because I'm watching them thinking, okay, so something's going to happen. And, like, I don't know, Ozzy's going to be, like, a monster or some shit like that. I don't know. Wasn't completely 100% off of that. But where it, where it goes from there, that's only half of the story. Because then it cuts to, like, I think, because I was watching that, like, segment with the game show. And I'm like, I remember the game shows, like, around that time that this shows that this is kind of, like, showing were more around the early 90s, not really 99. Well, that is supposed to be early 90s, and when it cuts to 99, it's a whole different story because, basically, the little girl's family kidnaps the host and, like, is making him go for his own obstacle courses and the, like the mom is like fucking crazy and the woman, the girl's in a wheelchair. I'm like, okay, I'm interested in where this is fucking going now. I, I had, a, I had thoughts of where it was going, but yeah, like, I, like I, not a hundred percent. Uh, I, it was fun. I liked that one. Um, I did not fucking know until just a few minutes before I did this review the guy who was the game show host was Steven Ogg. That name does not sound familiar. He was Trevor from Grand Theft Auto V. What? <laughs> like, I did not recognize him. And that makes me almost appreciate this segment even more. 
Like, he was awesome in, in, when he was in it. I was like, I really liked him in his segment. I thought he was over the top, and he was great. I just love the f- idea of thinking that, like, Trevor, after Grand Theft Auto V, had a, like, in a past life, had, like, a game show ho- It was a game show, kid's game show host. I like that idea. Um, fourth segment was Gawkers. At this point, I was noticing, looking at my clock, I'm like, there's not much of time left. There's still two stories to go. I'm like, holy shit. So, Gawkers is actually, it is kind of funny because it ties into, like, the segments. There's, in between each segment, there's, like, uh, like a home video of, like, some kid playing with his toys, so, toy soldiers or whatever. And you find out through this segment that one of the main leads is the person that's been filming these, doing these. And this is actually his VHS tape, his brother's VHS tape that you're watching. So, this starts out, like, with these skateboarder kids who also like to do pranks and, like, are talking about, you know, pop culture in the 90s. And, like, I'm watching this, like, I, like it was bringing fucking memories back to me. Like, I knew fucking douchebags like these dudes. And I was kind of loving these characters, like, even though they're awful. Like, they're, like, in a teenage sex comedy because they also become, they come in, or become, like, a teenage sex comedy because there's a next-door neighbor next to them that is, like, really hot and they are spying on her. They, through their video cameras, are trying to watch her, like, and spy on her and through their window and... A certain point she uh gets a macintosh computer and her one dorky brother the one dorky kid uh comes across her and tells her he could install a camera a webcam for her and when he does and he tells when he does the dorky kid is convinced by the others to basically help put in spyware so that they could spy on her camera. That's all I'm going to say about the story, because, you like, you're all like, okay, like, I'm watching this fucking segment, and like, I know this is a horror segment, so I'm like, waiting for the horror to begin, is this goes on for a while, and you're like, it's like this teenage sex comedy going on, and like, this 90s, and I'm like, where is the horror <laughs> part elements to it? And when it gets to the horror, I'm not going to spoil it, uh, I did not see that coming. <laughs> I can tell you, I did not see that coming. Anybody who tells me they saw that coming is fucking full of shit. Like, when the twist comes, I'm like, huh. I did not, well, that's that's definitely different. I, I mean, there was hints of it, of it, and it made parts that, stuff that was, like, mentioned, like, earlier in the segment kind of makes sense now, but, I'm like, all right, huh. That's different. I appreciated it. I was like, I, I liked it. I, so I kind of liked the characters too. The guy, the boy characters, and this, they seemed like characters I would fucking know back in the 90s. Uh, not saying I was like one of those ass creepy kids, but I mean, kids were kids. And then, so the last segment was To Hell and Back. And well, I think that's a segment that you could pretty much. The title explains itself. It's about a group of videographers that go to this house of witches who are doing a ritual on New Year's Eve. Like, it kind of references Y2K. I was hoping there was going to be a segment where they really fully utilized Y2K. They didn't really do... This is the only one that really kind of did, but didn't do it too much, in my opinion. And they reference it, but they don't... But, uh... They, so they go, these witches are doing a, a ceremony where they want to try to summon a, a demon into a girl's body. And some shy, uh, hijinks ensue with a demon and this camera crew. And the camera crew somehow ends up in hell. <laughs> That's literally like the story, like most of the story. And it's basically them trying to get back out of hell. Um, it was more of a comedic segment, uh, than horror, it had horror elements to it, but, uh, it was more comedic. It was the one that I thought was the weakest, but still had got, got some laughs out of me with some of the, some of the jokes in it. Um, 
I did like it for what it was. Uh, but it was the weakest segment. And, uh, yeah. Like I said, overall, I really enjoyed the hell out of VHS uh, 99. I actually did. I really did. I actually highly recommend it. Uh, you haven't seen it. Uh, so, yeah, that's as far as horror movie reviews. Uh, next review, like I said, is One Piece Film Red. Whatever the fuck that is. Coming up this Friday. I don't know about there's anything else. I, I haven't seen anything else yet. I'm sure it'll be another religious movie that they pop out of nowhere, but we'll see. Um, but that's as far as the horror movie reviews for October. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. I'm gonna fucking go get some rest. I gotta go to fucking work tomorrow. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you fucking appreciate these reviews. Uh, set for a lot of movies. This one. A lot. Uh, and review a lot. So, until then, I'll talk to you guys later.